Hello everyone. Sorry I couldn't be there with you today, but we're going to go over some problems. You have a worksheet that looks like this, right, in your package that you already have. It's called the Circuit Analysis Worksheet Number 1. The labs we will uh, catch up and do next day, but for today, so we don't fall behind, I want to go over these five problems with you. Um, after each problem, we'll pause the video shortly, and I'm going to give you a challenge, and then when you complete the challenge, we'll move on to the next problem. So this is the first problem. Yes, the drawing looks absolutely terrible. I'm using uh, just one of those drawing tablets, and you know my drawing skills are horrible. But at least you can somewhat see. This is um, part A of our worksheet. So we have a battery with 300 volts. And this is a series circuit going through three resistors. This one's 10 ohms, this one's 20 ohms, and this one's 30 ohms. Then we need to find every unknown piece of information in this circuit. And we have three pieces of information. You have um, potential difference or voltage, and you have current, and you have resistance. And then we need to find that for each resistor and our source. So first step is to find total resistance right here, going through the battery. So total resistance for a series circuit, if you remember, is the sum of the resistance for all of your resistors. So it's going to be 10 ohms plus 20 ohms plus 30 ohms. So when we add all of those up, we get 30 plus 20 is 50 plus 10 is 60 ohms. So our total resistance is 60 ohms. So we know that right there. And these are kind of like Sudoku puzzles. I love Sudoku puzzles. You find one number and that leads you to more information to be able to find the next number. So that 60 ohms is leading us to be able to find the current, the total current. Anytime you have two pieces of information, you can use Ohm's law to find them. Um, the remaining third piece. If you remember Ohm's law, I'll draw you your triangle down here. Ohm's law looks like this. Voltage equals current multiplied by resistance. But in this case, um, we know voltage. What we're looking for is current. So rearranging Ohm's law, we got current equal to voltage divided by resistance. And for our total voltage, we have 300, and then divided by 60. So 300 volts divided by 60 ohms. And that's going to give us 5 amps. So that's our next piece of information. And that's going to lead us to the next piece and so on. Now, in a series circuit, if you recall, what are Kirchhoff's laws? Or what is the same in a series circuit? So, as you go through, what will be the same for every resistor and the source? Is it current or potential difference? Take a second to think about that or check your notes. Current. Imagine that river going through here. It only has one pass, so the entire river must go through every single resistor, which means this resistor has 5 amps going through it. This resistor has 5 amps going through it. And this resistor has 5 amps going through it. So now we only have one more thing to solve for, the voltage through each resistor. And since, again, we know two pieces of information, we can use Ohm's law to solve for the third. So voltage equals current times resistance. So 5 amps times 10 ohms gives us 50 volts through this resistor. 20 times 5 gives us 100 volts through this resistor. And 30 times 5 gives us 150 volts this resistor. And just like Sudoku, you can 
check to make sure you haven't made a mistake. If you have the same number twice, you've made a mistake. But the rules of this game are Kirchhoff's loss. So as we go through, all the voltage in a series circuit should add to give you your total. So 50 plus 100, which is 150, plus another 150, does that give us 300? Yes, yes it does. So that's part A. Now what I want you to do, here's your challenge. Um, in your kits, all your resistors are 220 ohms. Now you're not going to be using your kits today. We're going to do that um, the next time I see you. But for today, I want you to solve this same circuit if your battery is 9 volts, because you have 9 volt batteries, and if each resistor is 220 ohms. Okay, so your battery will be a 9 volt battery, and each resistor is 220 ohms. Solve that same series circuit. And pause the video here and resume the video once everybody has um, had some time to try that. All right, so I'm assuming you've already paused and resumed, so let's go to the next problem. Next problem looks like this. So we have, again, this is not easy to draw on. <laughs> But is this a series or a parallel circuit? It's a parallel circuit. So we have 20 volts at the battery. Our first resistor is 10 ohms. Our second resistor is 10 ohms. And our last resistor is 20 ohms. And again, we need to solve for every unknown piece of information in this circuit. First step, find the total resistance. But in this case, you can't add it. You can't go 20 plus 10 plus 10 is 40. That would be wrong. Remember, in a parallel circuit, the more um, resistors you add in parallel, the less the total resistance. So it doesn't make sense to have a resistance that, go that is greater than any individual um, resistor in your circuit. It should be smaller. And that's because the relationship is 1 over R total equals 1 over, in this case, the first resistor, 10 ohms, plus 1 over the second resistor, 10 ohms, plus 1 over the third resistor, 20 ohms. That's going to be our total resistance. So working with this equation, um, you can change 1 over 10 to 2 over 20. It's an equivalent fraction plus 2 over 20, plus 1 over 20. 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5. So you're going to end up with a fraction of 5 over 20. And if you don't like fraction, that's fine. Just use your calculator. But these are fairly easy fractions to work with. And then the important thing is that you do not stop here. The total resistance is not 1 quarter, because that you can reduce to 1 quarter. The total resistance is not 1 quarter. Okay. One quarter is one over the total resistance. So what you need to do is take the reciprocal now of both sides of that equation, and you'll get RT over 1, or just RT, equals 4 over 1, or just 4. So our total resistance is 4 ohms. Then again, we can go and use our um, Ohm's law over here. If we are looking for uh, current, we can do voltage divided by resistance. So voltage divided by resistance, 20 over 4. And so current equals 20 volts divided by 4 ohms. And again, we get 5 amps. So here we have 5 amps. Now the next step. What is the same in a parallel circuit? It's not current, because if you'll see current, if you follow your river, your river is going to split. So you're going to get different amounts of your river going through each of these three um, branches. 
But what happens is any individual electron going through this circuit will only go through one of those resistors and give up all of its energy there. So in a parallel circuit, your voltage is the same, so that you have 20 volts being given off at this resistor, 20 volts for this resistor, and 20 volts for this resistor. And then using um, Ohm's law again, so now we want to find current, where current equals voltage divided by resistance. We'll get 20 divided by 10, so that's 2. Again, 20 divided by 10 is 2, and 20 divided by 20 is 1. So your total current, right, to do our check in a parallel circuit is equal to the sum of all the currents through each branch. So 2 plus 2 plus 1 does equal 5. So we're good there. Okay, so we finished solving this circuit. And what I'd like you to do again for your challenge is the same thing. Right? For a 9-volt battery, if you were to have 220 ohms here, 220 ohms here, 220 ohms here, solve, um, solve the circuit. Okay, so pause the video there, um, have a chance to try solve the circuit, and then we'll move on to part C when everybody's um, ready. All right, so I'm assuming that you've already paused, you've tried your challenge, let's move on to part C. Part C looks like this. So is that a, if I just stop there, is that series or parallel? It looks series, doesn't it? But then I do this. Now is it series or parallel? Well, you might want to say parallel, but you weren't wrong when you said series. These two resistors are definitely in series with each other, and these two are in series with each other. But these three branches are in parallel with each other, so this we call a mixed circuit. Mixed circuit's a little bit more tricky to solve, so what we're going to do is we're going to change it into a simple circuit. So let's first write our information. We have 6 volts at the battery. We have 8 ohms at this resistor, 16 ohms at this resistor. Over here, we have 10 ohms, 38 ohms. And our last resistor is 48 ohms. So how are we going to change this? Well, here's what we're going to do. These two resistors, which are in series with each other, we are going to write as one resistor that has an equivalent resistance to those two. What does that mean? That means what resistor, what single resistor can I place here that would create an equivalent or the same amount of resistance as these two together in series? Now in series, resistors um, add. So 16 plus 8 is 24. So if we replaced it with one resistor that is 24 ohms, that's an equivalent circuit. We're going to do the same over here. But this resistor will need to be equivalent to these here. So 10 plus 38 is 48. Moving over. And this one we don't need to do anything to. It's already on its own. So now, when you look at this, this looks like the problem we just did, but with different numbers. Okay, our battery is still the same at 6 volts. So we can solve this now. First, we need to find um, total resistance for this circuit here. So total resistance, or because it's a parallel circuit, 1 over the total resistance is 1 over 24 ohms plus 1 over 48 ohms plus 1 over 48 ohms. You can think of this as a 2 over 48. That's an equivalent fraction. And so on your numerators, you have 2 plus 1 plus 1, which would be 4. 
denominator 48. Right? You can reduce that to 1 over 12. And that is 1 over total resistance. So take the reciprocal of both our fractions and we get total resistance equals 12 ohms. So that's our total resistance over here, 12 ohms. And it's the same as this one, which is important because this is what the question actually is asking us. Not to solve this circuit, but to solve this one. But as we find information here, that's going to lead us to tell us information here. Because the totals will be the same. And since now we have volts and we have um, resistance, we can go back again and use Ohm's law to find current, where current will be voltage divided by resistance, or 6 divided by 12 gives us 1 half amps. And when we're solving circuits, I do prefer to use fractions because um, things just won't add up if you start rounding off your decimals. So let's stick with our fractions instead of writing 0 0.5. This also means the total over here is half an amp. All right, let's come back down to this circuit. What's the same in a parallel circuit? Just like before, voltages. So we have six volts going through this one, six volts going through this one, and six volts going through this one. Now this resistor here is the same we have up here. So I can write six volts. These, not so sure. Okay, because this resistor may be equivalent to these two, but it is not um, the two of them. So let's continue solving this one. Now in this one, we have two pieces of information. We need to find the current for each resistor. To do that, we're going to use Ohm's law again. So using Ohm's law, right, which is current equals voltage um, divided by resistance. So first we get six over 24 which is 1 over um, 4 amps. And then 48 divided by 6, which is reduces to 1 8 amps. Oh, sorry, I meant uh, 6 divided by 48. And 6 divided by 40 again is 1 over 8 amps. And you can check that again. So 1 quarter plus 1 8 plus one eighth. Well, one eighth plus one eighth is a quarter. And then if you add another quarter, you get a half. So it works, right? Now this, if we were to split this up again into two resistors, what's the same in a series circuit? We can go back to our first example right here. If you follow a river, the river must go through all resistors. And so the current's the same. It's the same thing here. If you have a current going through um, this one resistor, when we split that up to two, the current, that river, still goes through both of them. So the current is the same. They each have a current going through them of one quarter amp. And these ones each have a current going through them of one eighth of an amp. And our last one here is one eighth of an amp. So now we've actually almost solved this more difficult mixed circuit by using this simple one instead. See here, I have two pieces of information for all these resistors. To find the last piece of information, voltage, once again, use Ohm's law. Voltage equals current multiplied by resistance. So 1 quarter times 8 gives us 2 volts. 1 quarter times 16 gives us 4 volts. And again, oops, I wrote amps. I guess we can't use volts. Okay. And you can perform a check with Kirchhoff's loss. Because as um, if you follow one electron that gains 6 volts at the battery and it chooses this pathway, it must lose all that 6 volts 
it does it. Well, it loses two here and then four here. So yeah, it does. So check, you can give yourself a check. And let's do the same over here. So you have um, 10 times an eighth. That doesn't give us that nice number, does it? But we can just write 10 over 8 volts. And this one would be um, 38 times 1 over 8. So let's just write 38 over 8 volts. And again, if you were to add them, 38 plus 10 is 48. And 48 divided by 8 is 6. So it works. All right, so last challenge I'm going to give you, try to do this circuit with a 9-volt battery and where every single resistor is 220 ohms. So pause the video there and try that. Once you've had a chance to try it, continue the video and we'll move on to the next one. All right, welcome back. Let's go on to the next one. D. Now D looks like this. So we have here, looks like a parallel circuit because we got to choose our pathway. And then we continue on one pathway that definitely goes through these two resistors, which seems like a series circuit. So this is again a mixed circuit. Let's write what we know here. This is 4.5 volts. Here we have 8 ohms, 4 ohms, and 8 ohms. This one's 1 ohm, and this one is 6 ohms. So what we need to do again is we need to somehow make this simpler. What we can do is we can take these resistors, which are in parallel, and write them as one equivalent resistor here. Once we do that, this is what our circuit looks like. Very simple um, series circuit, just like um, part A of this worksheet, where we have 4.5 volt for our power source, this will be some equivalent resistor, which we're going to have to figure out what resistance that would need to be, to be equivalent to three in parallel. This would be one ohm, and this is our six ohm. So this equivalent resistor, or I'll just call it all R parallel, that equivalent resistor needs to be what? So when we add resistance in parallel, we need to go one over R parallel is one over eight, ohms plus 1 over 4 ohms plus 1 over 8 ohms. Okay, we can rewrite this fraction as 2 over 8. So then on our numerator, we have um, 1 plus 2 plus uh, 1, which is 4, which is 4 over 8. And 4 over 8 reduces to 1 over 2. And that equals to 1 over R parallel. Take the reciprocal of both sides, and you get R parallel equals 2 ohms. So now we know the resistance for this one. So now you can find the total resistance. Total resistance in a series circuit, very simple. You just add them. 6 plus 1 is 7, plus 2 is 9. <laughs> Why did I write this? 9 ohms. Okay, and then current, again, voltage divided by um, resistance, so 4.5 divided by 9 gives us a current of 1 half amps, just like our previous problem. It's just a coincidence. <laughs> okay, and then in a series circuit, what's the same in a series circuit? The current. Okay, so this has 1 half of an amp going through it. This has one half of an amp going through it, and this has one half of an amp going through it. Okay, and these two we never change, so we can write the same over here for this circuit. One half amp, one half 
amp, and of course the battery. 9 ohms and a total of 1.5 amps. Okay, so now we have two pieces of information for each resistor here in our simple series circuit. So the remaining is to solve for voltage. And voltage you just multiply by the two. So 2 times a half gives us a 1 volt for this one. A 1 times a half is just half a volt. And a 6 times a half gives us 3 volts. And again, you can check. 1 plus a half is 1 and a half plus 3 is four and a half, so that works. Now, let's look at solving this here. These we know, because they're the same as here. We had um, a half a volt through this one, and three volts through this one. Now this one, in a parallel circuit, what stays the same? Again, Kirchhoff's um, voltage law says a, um, voltage stays the same in a parallel circuit, which is one volt. So this one had one volt, this one had one volt, and this one had one volt. Two pieces of information, use Ohm's law, and we solve for um, our final piece, current. And current is voltage divided by um, resistance. So we're going to have one eighth of an amp here, one quarter of an amp here, and one eighth of an amp. And again, you'll see that all those add up to our total resistance one half, which is shift. Okay, and you'll also see that um, we always say that um, electricity takes the path of least resistance, and that would be the middle path, right? Four ohms is the path of least resistance, and you can see you get more of the current going through that path of least resistance. You'll never get all of the current going through the path of least resistance. It's like um going shopping at say Costco right? and you're never going even if you look at the shortest line you're never going to have everybody go to the shortest line because it's not going to be the shortest line anymore right you may get more people going to that one but you'll never have all the electricity going through that one path of least resistance all right um let's do our final example now. Um, if you want to pause, you can take a breather, and then we'll come back to our final example. All right, here's our last example, E, the real challenge one. So here we have a battery, 20 volts. This one's fun. Then it looks like we have two resistors in parallel. First one is 20 ohms. And the next one is 80 ohms. And then we have another resistor here in series attached to three other resistors in parallel. I know. What are you doing to us, Mr. French? You know? And then finally, all of those attached to another resistor in series to all of those. This one is 2 ohms, 20, 60, 60, and 10. So before you watch me do this one, I want you to pause the video, take some time, 5-10 minutes, try to solve this one yourself. Once you've attempted it, then we'll come back and work through it together to see where you might have had troubles. Did you pause it? <laughs> Alright, so let's continue. We're going to work through this one. So this, we can split up. Um, not split up, we can combine to an equivalent resistor. So we're going to write it as one, like this, which we'll solve for in a moment. Our two ohm resistor can stay the same. Those three resistors in parallel can be combined. And our last 10 ohm resistor can stay the same. So that's the goal, is to always simplify it to a simple circuit. Here we have 20 volts. This one 
this one's 2 ohms, and this one's 10 ohms. So we need to figure out what those other two equivalent resistors are. Okay, here we have uh, 20 and 80. So to solve for that, 1 over R equals 1 over 20 ohms plus 1 over 80 ohms. You can think of 1 over 20 as being 4 over 80. And then 4 plus 1 is 5. So you'll get 5 over 80 ohms. And remember, I, I always get a lot of students stopping there. Always write what's on the, the left side of your equation. Because a lot of students will stop there and say, oh, that resistance is 5 over 80. Not true. That's 1 over. I'll say this 100 times, but still, someone will surprise me and do it. <laughs> so flip it. So R equals 80 over 5. over 5, and reduce that to um, 16 ohms. Okay, so this one will be 16 ohms. We can do the same for here. So you'll have 1 over 60 plus 1 over 60 plus 1 over 20. So if you haven't done this, um, maybe pause the video here and try to figure out what this equivalent resistor um, will be. All right, so let's do this now. So we have 1 over R equals 1 over 60 ohms plus 1 over 60 ohms plus 1 over 20 ohms. Again, if you don't like fractions, all I do is take this one and change it into an equivalent fraction with the same denominator. So 20 times 3 will give us 60. And so I have to multiply the numerator, numerator by 3 too. So that's 3 over 60. And then 1 plus 1 plus 3 is 5. So that's 5 over 60. And again, that equals 1 over our, our equivalent. Flipping it, um, not much more than one. R <laughs> equals um, 60 divided by 5, which is 12 ohms. So this one is 12 ohms. All right, and now you can um, figure out what the total resistance is, because in a series circuit, you can just add them. Okay, um, 16 plus 2 is 18, plus 12 is 30 plus 10 is 40. I've been talking so much, sorry, I'm losing my voice here. Uh, 40 ohms. And then current is voltage divided by resistance. <laughs> I'm laughing because I see, once again, I gave you an example where current equals one half. Don't always expect it to equal one half. I'm going to give you a quiz where it's equal to one third or something. Uh, all right. And in a series circuit, that current will be the same throughout. So we'll have one half amps here. One half amps here, one half amps here, and one half amps here. And you can use Ohm's law to figure out um, the voltage through each. So voltage is current times resistance. So 16 times a half is 8 volts. 2 times a half is 1 volt. 12 times a half is 6 volts. And 10 times a half. And again, you can check. Those should all add to give you 20. So does it? 8 plus 1 is 9. Plus 6 is 15. Plus 5 is 20. So awesome. We're doing things all right so far. These are great checks to uh, get used to doing because when you write a, a quiz on this, which you will, um, you should be able to know you got perfect before you even hand it in. That's what these checks are useful for. All right, so... This one we know everything for. I'm not going to write it all down, but um, it's the same information here. And likewise, this one is the same information here. And of course, our total information is the same information here. <coughs> what we need to do is look at this one and split it up here 
and then we need to do the same for this one. Now in a parallel circuit, it's voltage or potential difference that remains the same. So in this case, 8 volts. So 8 volts must go through the top one and the bottom one. Okay, and then define current. Sorry about that. That was my alarm. I mean, Star Trek is starting in five minutes, so we got to get wrap this up. <laughs> yes, I watch Star Trek. I'm a proud nerd. Okay, so where was I? Current. So current is um, voltage divided by resistance. So this will give us um, 8 over 20. Okay. Um, you can reduce that if you want. 8 over 20, 4 over 10, 2 over 5. So we've got 2 over 5 amps here. And you can do the same thing over here. But you don't always have to use Ohm's law. Right? We have a whole half an amp coming through. So um, 2 over 5 plus what gives you 1 half? Um, if you don't like that, then you can use Ohm's law and do 8 over 80, um, which is 1. And 2 over 5 is the same as 4 over 10. 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 over 10 is a half. So check. Works. And let's do the same here. Parallel circuit. Voltage is the same in a parallel circuit, so they're each 6 volts. Okay, and current equals voltage divided by resistance, so 6 divided by 60, here we have 110 amps. Again, 6 divided by 60, over here we have 110 amps. Okay. Um, 110 plus 110 is um, 2 over 10. And what then do you need to add to get exactly 1 half or an equivalent fraction of 5 over 10? It should be 3 over 10. Okay. Is it? Well, 6 divided by 20? Yeah, 3 over 10. We've done it all and we've checked it all, even though my writing is absolutely terrible on this. But that's that. All right. So I will post this on YouTube. Of course I will. You're watching it on YouTube right now. And the labs we will get when I see you next. Have a good week.